You too. Hello, everyone, and welcome back. As always, I'm your girl, Candy Washington. So before we dive into today's kiki, which is icy apologies, the Real Housewives of Salt Lake City season four, recapping episode 11 and 12. So before we dive in, be sure to like, subscribe, and share. So with that, you guys, let's get into it. Happy belated Thanksgiving to Natoski, to Tay Tay the Savior, and also to Rose. Thank you guys so much. Shout out to everybody in the chat. Be sure to drop your name, say hello, where you're listening from, and any questions or comments that you might have. All right. So the last couple of episodes, they've been fun and cute, except for Whitney's friend passing. That was kind of sad and just really, my heart goes out to her and just very, very, very sad. That was a very um, humbling thing to watch. And I must say, you know, before we get too far into our key keys and our shade, that it did give really great perspective on life. You know, definitely love people, hug people, love yourself, hug yourself, cherish every single moment you have on this earth because you never know when it will be your last. So sending condolences to Whitney and just in remembrance of her beautiful friend, Sherry. All right. Now, I love that during these episodes, they're doing more authentic dives into their relationships and marriages, right? Like we're kind of seeing where the cracks are. We're seeing where everything is going. Um, you know, when it comes to Meredith and Seth and Whitney and Justin, um, even Lisa and and her husband, you know, I feel like everybody, especially Angie and her husband too, I kind of feel like everybody's relationship is either just sort of floating or it's uh, in, a, in an understanding, like an arrangement, or the arrangement itself is getting uncomfortable because it's getting exposed, if that makes sense. And I'll talk about that a little bit more when I go on, on each person's slide, okay? I loved how the weird grudges and fights are kind of being put to bed, like Lisa versus Heather. Like, I'm excited that that's being put to bed. I was really tired of Heather's personality being, I hate Lisa Barlow. Psych, I love Lisa Barlow. You know what I mean? So I'm happy that that narrative is being put to bed. I think we're going to have a lot more fresh conversations, a lot more fun, a, more of a dynamic duo. Like, I'm really excited for that. Then also when it comes to Meredith and Whitney, like, I'm happy that that weird feud has kind of been put to bed. I wonder if it will be reignited later on in the season. I think it probably will be. But at least for now, Meredith and Whitney seem to be in a good place. And then these episodes have really been setting up for the whole, <clears throat> excuse me, for the whole Bermuda meltdown, you know, and the group is finally seeing Monica for who she is. You know, we're getting Monica versus Heather, Monica versus Le uh, Lisa, Monica versus the group, right? But then in this episode, we also started to see a little bit of Lisa versus Meredith. And again, I hope not. Like, I'm tired of that. Let's move on, ladies. And then also we're seeing Whitney versus Lisa when, you know, Lisa didn't kiss Whitney's butt when she came into Meredith's um, party. And, you know, Whitney was feeling some type of way because Lisa and Heather's relationship is getting better. Right. But here we go. Dun, 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 dun. All right, let's talk about Monica. So as we all know, Monica's lies and weird freakouts are being exposed. But I also wanted to put this out there for you guys to see what you guys think about this. I think that production has actually been protecting Monica because she's a production plant. I think that production brought her onto the show 100% understanding that she was going to stir the pot. She was going to, you know... Um, put things out there to bring the drama. She was Jin Shaw's assistant. Like, I think she is 100% a producer plant. Very much like Kyle is a producer plant on Beverly Hills. How Bryn is a producer plant on um, The Real Housewives of New York. How Kenya is a producer plant on Roa, right? I think she's 100% a producer plant and she's been being protected. And I'll tell you why. I think that her behavior has been much, much, much worse than what has actually been shown on screen. Because if you think about it, 
sure, Monica has had some meltdowns. She's had some moments. She's had some drama. She said some questionable, shady things about, you know, Lisa's old and her face and get both blah, blah, blah. But comparatively to what we've seen versus the lady's reaction doesn't match up. And Lisa Barlow also said there was a lot that wasn't shown about the conversation that that they had um, at Heather's weird little house on the prairie party, right? Lisa was like, there was so much that wasn't shown that happened. And then also even with when Monica lost her mind at the Greek dinner, you know, she threw a shoe at people and it almost hit children. Like, why is it? Production shows, you know, Lisa Barlow's hot mic moments. They show, you know, Angie throwing a glass. You know, they show people going nuts and crazy, people peeing on themselves, you know, Heather and puking on herself, you know, people blacking out. They show all of this horrible behavior, but why are they not showing the actual juice and and the nuts and bolts of Monica's poor behavior? Because Heather's reaction this episode, along with Angie's reaction, and um, even like Whitney and Meredith and, and Lisa, the way that they're responding to Monica makes me feel like there was something way bigger that she has done and said than what we've actually seen. Like Angie and Heather were having like a serious like coffee conversation. Like, listen, I don't know if we can travel with this B. Like, I don't even know if we could go to Bermuda. Like who questions a cash trip? You see what I'm saying? Like, what is really going on? And I think that's why it's going to seem more like a surprise to us when the Bermuda stuff happens. But I think to the ladies, it's not going to be that big of a jump. I think I think it'll be a shock. Yes, they're not going to be expecting it. But I think Monica has had very, very, very poor behavior that production has not shown us. They even said that, um, who said it? I think it was either Meredith or or Lisa, maybe even Heather, had said, "Oh, production really did you a favor by not showing everything from the from the Greek dinner." So my question is, why is she being so protected? Everybody else is being shown, right? Now, from not this last episode, but the episode before, I did think Monica hanging out with her daughter was a very beautiful, touching moment, talking about her dad. But again, stop bashing your mom in the process. You know, your mom kept your memorabilia. She was there to support you during the birth of your daughter. Like, you just need to stop with the fake abusive mom narrative. I'm happy that that was not talked about on this last episode. This was episode 11 I'm talking about. Episode 12, thank goodness. We didn't talk about that because I'm over it. It's done. Stick a fork in it, buddy. You know what I'm saying? And then Monica came to Heather's party with an attitude. You know, she came with an attitude ready to go, but then she was on her best behavior at Meredith's party because Heather put her on notice. So when Heather sat um, Monica down and was like, listen, boo-boo, you're not fitting in. This isn't working. We might have to cancel this Bermuda birthday bash for you if you cannot get yourself all the way together. So that's why she came to Meredith's party ready with a full apology in her mouth to Lisa. Kissing Lisa's butt from from A from A B C D to Z. You see what I'm saying? And so Monica knows when to shut up, and she and she knows when to show out. You know, so to me that shows you that her outburst, her dramatic breakdowns, are all um, planned by her. They're all well within her control, because when the moment she was put on blast and she was put on notice, she was fine. She shut all the way up. She brought rum. She brought cake. She you know she was apologizing to Lisa. She had no problems. She had no issues. She was on best behavior, boo boo, because she didn't want to jeopardize that Bravo check in her 15 minutes of fame on the show. Right? Okay. Now, I also noticed that, you know, when Heather was talking about Monica's behavior, like, oh, you know, she will start mess, she'll engage in toxic fights, but then she'll play the victim. Like, I don't know what her deal is. You know, one minute she's happy and having fun. The next minute she's, you know, cussing people out. The next minute she's flat and doesn't have any type of personality. And then the next minute she's blaming everybody for the fights, even though she gets just as dirty in the fights. And she's like, that reminds me of Jen Shaw, but it also reminds me of Monica and her mother's dynamic. Where Monica will start the fight, 
She'll be just as messy with her mom. And then she turns around and regurgitates it as the narrative of her being the victim and her um, not being able, you know, her, she's the one who everybody's coming at. And I think the ladies are seeing, I mean, I think they already knew like lay off your mom, but I think they're seeing that dynamic that her mom even talked about. That's why at the Easter dinner, her mom, when she, when she went and like stomped off at our temper tantrum, her mom was like, no, 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 like just leave her. Like, don't say anything. This is just Monica. Like, just leave her. Like whatever the case is, because this is who Monica is. You know, people always love to blame the mom, but mothers know their children. And you can have a toxic ass daughter without being an abusive mother. You see what I'm saying? I mean, to the point where she had to go to Mary for support. Mary. <laughs> like Monica really likes Mary. Come on now. She just likes Mary because Mary hates everybody else. Okay. Now let's move on to Miss Lisa Barlow. And you guys, I know that it's, I know that winter is coming. And I know that there is snow on the ground where I'm at, but hell has frozen over because I have to call my girl out. Lisa, I'm not on your side in these arguments, boo-boo. I still love you. I'm still a stan. But Lisa, you know me. I have my favorites, but I'm not a fan, meaning I call people out how I see it. So even though I like Lisa, I'm going to call her out on her stuff, okay? We'll get, we'll get into it. Now, first, I am totally okay with Jack Barlow not going on a mission. I'm not sure why that kept making news. Jack spotted in California. Jack no longer going to mission in Colombia. Good. Okay. Next. Like what? Like, I don't know why that's making news. I'm fine with that. Check. However, I'm also tired of the storyline. Like we get it. I don't need to see anybody else's kid go to prom. I don't see anybody. I don't need anybody else's kid starting their own fashion line. I don't need anybody else's kid going to college, going to a mission. I'm tired of that. I'm tired of seeing your kids go off to places. I'm not watching the Real Housewives Children Edition. I want the Real Housewives. So it can be a moment. It can be a, a scene, an A episode. But I don't need storyline arcs about your kids being kids. People go on missions. People go to prom. People go to college. People graduate. People leave the nest. We get it. I don't need any more Jack Barlow storyline. I don't. I'm over it. But what I do love is her friendship with um, Heather. I think I'm going to be really here for it. I think that's like the friendship that we've been missing and we're going to really want it. It's ruffling a lot of feathers. And by feathers, I mean Whitney. Whitney is so in her feelings about this budding relationship. She is so in her feelings about it. It's not even funny. Not even funny, right? Um, like her friend passed away and she made it about Heather and Lisa. Like, girl, bye, stop, full stop, okay? And the reason why Whitney is so in her feelings about this is because don't forget how this all started, okay? I'll, I'll say this now, even though we're on Lisa's side, slide, I'll talk about Whitney real quick. The reason why Whitney is so in her feelings when it comes to Lisa and Heather being friends is this, how it all started. Heather so desperately wanted to be friends with Lisa. But Heather got in her feelings when Lisa Barlow was like, I don't remember her. I don't know her. Like, we're just meeting, remember? And she was like, oh, you don't know me? We went to school together. You're calling me the good time girl? You gave me a thumbs up? A thumbs up is like an F you emoji. Remember when she was like so in her feelings and Lisa was like, I'm confused. I think we went to the same school. You see what I'm saying? Heather never got over that. And Heather did what Heather does when she's mad, particularly at Lisa Barlow or anybody. She recruits people on that mission. She gets people around her to then she becomes the victim. And then she gets people around her to then go against the person that hurt Heather's feelings. And that person was her cousin, Whitney. And Whitney, don't forget, wanted to be friends with Lisa. But instead of being friends with Lisa, she doubled down with Heather. They became bad weather. And the both of them were going after Lisa hardcore for like the first two seasons. Remember? And then the moment 
bad weather broke up Lisa and Heather. And that's when Lisa and, um, I'm sorry, Whitney and Heather broke up bad weather. <laughs> and that is when Lisa and Whitney became friends. Like this was about season three, but it was because Heather and um, Whitney were beefing. They had their whole falling out. Lisa, Whitney was like, I'm taking a vaca uh, friendship vacation from Heather. This, that, and the third. I'm, I want to be friends with Lisa. Lisa's great. Blah, blah, blah. And I think that Whitney is now all in her feelings, seeing the, her two nemesises now come together to be friends. So she's like, wait a minute, Heather. You talk so much crap about Lisa. You made me hate Lisa. You put all this stuff in my ear about Lisa, but now you're friends with her and you don't have my back. Oh, wait a minute, Lisa. You hate Heather. You've talked about Heather like a dog for the last four seasons, but now you and Heather are friends, but you don't have my back as a friend. So I think that Whitney is feeling left out and she's probably feeling used. Like, okay, so Heather, when you didn't like Lisa, you know, we were such good friends bashing her. Okay, Lisa, when you didn't like Heather, we were such good friends bashing her. But now I'm the odd, odd person out. Do you see what I'm saying? So I think that's what's going on with Whitney, right? But when it comes to, to, um, to Lisa, she did make a great point. She said, someone who talks about their mother like that will never be a friend to you or to any other woman. And she was talking about Monica, and that is spot on. She called it right because Monica now is a liar and she's being exposed. And now everyone is seeing it. But this is where I have to diverge my love for Lisa is that she was definitely on the wrong side of the Meredith issue. You know, she was definitely being a hypocrite. You can't say, oh, Meredith, you're horrible. You're this horrible person. I did distance myself from, you know, because you said you knew something about somebody's family or you and you knew secrets and rumors about them. But then on Mad Day, when you're mad at Monica, you turned around and said the same exact thing to Meredith. You know, oh, Monica is mean to me, but she shouldn't be because she's low hanging fruit. I know a lot about her. I could say a lot of things about her. You said the same exact thing that basically um, Meredith said about Angie. The reason why you have a problem with Meredith isn't really because you want to have Angie's back. It's because you haven't gotten over what has happened over the last few seasons. And I get it. It was traumatic. It was hurtful. But you're you're now the new Meredith where you're harping on a grudge that needs to be put to bed. Because when you harp on a grudge too long, you're the one who starts to stink, not the other person. And I get it. You feel like Meredith didn't have your back. She was a bad friend. She was talking about you and your family and your business. But at the end of the day, all of you ladies talk about each other. All of you ladies do it. And I think it's enough. I think it's enough, Lisa. I think Lisa maybe needs to talk to someone about the issues she's having with her friends and her friendship dynamics and being able to sort of let some of that stuff go because it looked good really childish and I and Lisa knew she was wrong at the when she had um lunch with Meredith Meredith's like wait a minute hold up you're saying you're not going to be friends with me for saying that I know a rumor about somebody when we all know rumors about people and I never even said what the rumor was and now you're turning around and doing the same exact thing you know it cuts both ways so when it comes to that situation, I'm on Meredith's side. She had the most logical argument and she made the best she made the most sense about it. Now, when it comes to Lisa versus Whitney, I am on Whitney's side to an extent cuz I just don't really trust Whitney. I do believe Lisa when she said, hey, you know, everybody grieves differently. I didn't know how to approach you. And I think it went a couple of ways. I think it went one. Yes, I do think Lisa was telling the truth when she was like, listen, I don't know how you grieve. And it's an awkward conversation. Like you don't always know how to deal with somebody else's pain and grief. I totally understand. That. I think that was a very valid point. I do think that Lisa was already in her own head about a lot of other stuff. And she was just preoccupied. You know, she's get, becoming friends with Heather. She doesn't want to really talk to Monica. Like she just had a lot of her own stuff on her own plate. And I think sometimes when we are going through our own grief and pain and we're so consumed by it, we forget that other people have their own life too. 
And they have their own agenda and objectives with that. But I say that to say this. Lisa should have, and this is why I think Lisa needs to talk to somebody about her female friendships, because I do think she's very traumatized by the show. But I say that to say this. I do think that Lisa should have handled the way Whitney reacted differently. Because I think the only thing in that moment is not defending yourself. It's to comfort your friend. And she should have just said, oh, my God, I am so, so sorry. I love you. Are you okay? And she should have just scooped her up in her arms and gave her a big old hug and just said, you know what? However you feel is right. If I didn't say hi to you, if I brought somebody else a gift, if I did, I, whatever you're saying is 100% right and valid. And I'm so, so sorry. And I love you. And I'm here for you. What do you need for me in this moment? Right? Because I don't think that Lisa truly meant anything by what she was doing. I don't think she was in her mind like, Whitney just lost her best friend to cancer. Let me go be a jerk to her at this party. I think Lisa is just very self-absorbed. Lisa was into what Lisa needed to do and what her agenda was and all of that stuff. I don't think it was a personal slight to Whitney. But at the same time, when someone has just lost their friend or lost anybody or is going through any type of crisis, sometimes when you are, even not intentionally, but if you are being insensitive to where they're at, then yes, you can kind of just, you know, put your tail between your legs and suck it up and you show up for your friend in that moment. Because particularly in those moments, you, you're not in your right mind. Your emotions are all over the place. You don't know what's going to set you off. You don't know how you're going to react. Now, my only hesitancy with that when it comes to Whitney is you guys know I always watch their faces and I watch their eyes. So when Whitney came back into Meredith's party, when Lisa had stomped off, she had this look of satisfaction on her face, like, hmm, I got that B. And to me, I was like, that's not the look of someone who is distraught that their friend didn't hug them over their friend's death. That is the look of someone who felt like they just got won over on somebody that they didn't like. Do you know what I mean? So. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's kind of where I I land on 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 that one. But I want I, but I want to know what you guys think. And to and to me, and then the fact that we see the promos when Whitney brings it up again, like, "Oh, you brought Heather and all this other stuff." It's just like what was your actual issue, Whitney? Was your issue that Lisa didn't comfort you in the way that you needed to be comforted in that moment? Or is your issue that Lisa brought Heather a gift and they're getting along and you now you feel like the odd man out? Because I'm just thinking about me. God forbid I am not speaking this into existence, okay? I'm not speaking this. Hypothetically, if a friend of mine that I love dearly passed away, I don't think, and this is just me, and again, everybody grieves differently. I don't think... I would have the wherewithal to be keeping score about who brought a gift to who at a party. I think I would be like, wait a minute, like you didn't, like I need you, like come come say hi to me, like come hug me, like come talk to me, like I need you. You know, that yes, but I don't think that if my true reason why I'm upset with someone is from them not comforting me, would I even think, oh, but you brought somebody a gift. Like did Whitney think she should have brought her a gift? And Lisa was like, I have flowers coming to you. And she's like, I don't want flowers. I want you. And also, Whitney, I'm just going to be honest with you. Lisa isn't your man. Lisa is your friend slash coworker. She's not your man. You were talking to Lisa like she owed you money, like you had just had sex with her. Like you you were talking to Lisa like you were to, should be talking to like, you know, your husband, or, you know, somebody who owes you money. Like, that's how you were talking to her. Like, Lisa is, is your coworker, and sure, she's your friend. You know, there's levels to this. Yes, she should have hugged you and said, and said, I'm so sorry. But also, Whitney, I understand you're grieving, but, like, manage your expectations. I want you. What? Get the hell out of here. It's just, it's too, 
It's 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 too bizarre. It's too bizarre. Okay, let's move on to Ange. So Angie and her husband are obviously struggling. It's kind of painful to watch. Like he wasn't on this episode, but he was on the last episode. And I stand by this. What I think when it comes to this is that I think that Angie and her husband have an agreement. Like I think a lot of these people do that they're going to do life together and they're going to raise their daughter together. You know, when they say two years since they've been alone, that's obviously code for they haven't had sex in two years. And I felt like their dinner date was a bit staged to address the cheating rumors and the state of their marriage. Um, Or I don't know, do you guys think they really want to work on their marriage? Or are they actually happy with how things are? Which is what I think. I think they're actually happy with how things are. I think he's fine doing him. I think she's fine doing her. And I think they're fine being co-parents to their daughter. What I think they're not fine with is the rumors and the speculation and the scrutiny that has now been put upon their marriage and their relationship. Do you see what I'm saying? Because I think if it's been two years with not being alone, maybe more, who knows, having their 12-year-old daughter sleep in the bed with them or however old she is, she's too old to be sleeping in the bed, that's for damn sure. You know, all of the allegations about both him and Angie having their own affairs, you know, there's stuff that come out about Angie cheating and him cheating. I don't know if it's cheating, if they have an understanding, but you know what I mean, dipping out. So I think that had it not been for the rumors that put a microscope on their marriage, I don't think that they would actually care to have their alone dinner dates or change the dynamic of their marriage. I think a long time ago, they made the decision, let's just do life together for whatever reason, whether it's because of being, you know, Greek Orthodox, being in the Mormon community, whether it's society, whether it's family, religion, where they feel the need to sort of have this sort of stereotypical husband, wife, kid, house situation. I think a long time ago, they came together and said, you know what? I really love you. And I love you too. It might not be that romantic love, but I love you. We have all of these external factors and stressors and expectations. Let's just do life together. That's what I think they decided. And I think it actually really worked for them until she got on the show and the world was asking questions. Do you see what I'm saying? Um, but to me, Angie, I could leave her. I don't really need her on the show. I don't know what she's bringing. I don't know. It's not personality, maybe a little bit of storyline with the rumors, but I don't know. She's just flat to me. I don't really know what she really brings. She has a little bit of a spat with Meredith here and there. I guess she's like someone to ask questions. I don't know. I don't know if we need her in particular. Maybe a different housewife I think could probably replace her. I don't think that if she were to not come back, it would be a loss to the show. I don't really know exactly what she's bringing, if that makes sense. Okay. Now, let's talk about Miss Whitney Rose. Whitney Rose. So like I said, I did feel really bad for her about the passing of her friend. Um, and then Whitney and Justin are having major problems. Okay? Major problems. Number one, financial. Again, what happened to the skincare line after spending thousands of do- thousands and dollars and thousands of dollars on it? Your life savings or the money you're going to spend to buy- to make a you know retirement house or vacation home, whatever the hell excuse you guys were using. What happened to the skincare line? Again, I think that was nothing but some type of white collar financial scheme. I think they either use that skincare line to wash money, launder money, evade taxes, something. I don't know. I don't know the exact fraud, but it smells like fraud. You don't just say I spent our life savings or the equivalent of what we could have bought a whole entire house for. And it's just like, like we didn't skip a beat. What? There's some fraud in there. I'm sorry, because just as a human being, I don't care how strong your marriage is, unless you are so financially abundant 
that hundreds of thousands of dollars would mean nothing to you financially, that is going to cause a major problem in your relationship. And at the time, it didn't. I think they're having problems now, but I think it's, they're having multiple problems. I don't think their core problem is this squandering of hundreds of thousands of dollars. I think they're having financial problems in general. In addition to that, do you see what I'm saying? But we'll see. And then she's also got defensive about the therapist. Like, do you think therapy's working? He shut me down. I was talking about the finances. And it's like, um, and I actually agree with Justin. I actually agreed with Justin a lot. He was like, well, I think it it's hard in the short ter- term, but in the long term, you know, it's helpful. And that is how therapy should be. You know, in the therapy session, you should be challenged. You should be a little triggered, a little pissed off, because that means that you're starting to shake up your thoughts. You're starting to shake up your patterns. You're you're starting to see, have more self-awareness. So if your therapist is actually challenging you and pushing you, obviously in a healthy way, that's actually how you're supposed to do therapy. You're, You're not supposed to just leave therapy being like, oh my God, sunshine and rainbows, and I'm always right. If you leave your therapist thinking you're always right, you should find a new therapist because your therapist is there to challenge you. So it actually sounds like you have a good therapist and you're being triggered by what your therapist is calling to light, which is why what Justin said is true. You get triggered in the moment. The therapist gives you awareness. Well, hey, well, this is how you're actually showing up in the world. And this is the consequence for that. And then after you have time to mull it over and to think and after a couple more sessions and living life and applying your work, you're like, oh, Now I totally get why I was pushed for that. Now I know how to communicate better. Now I know how to do my finances better. Now I understand why people are responding to me this way. Therapy is supposed to challenge you, not coddle you. And it seems like Whitney just wants a therapist who's going to agree with her rather than actually push her. And that's why she really annoys me with her whole weaponizing her healing journey and her childhood trauma and her therapy speak You know, she's definitely that person who weaponizes all of those things. Childhood trauma is real. Healing journeys are necessary for every person on this planet. But weaponizing it against other people is not okay. And it's actually a sign that you are not healed and you're not on your healing journey when you try to manipulate people by using trigger words and buzzwords and your trauma and your pain to manipulate and control other people in order for them to do what you want them to do or to villainize them when they don't do what you want to do. And that's what Whitney does. These are my boundaries. Shut up, Whitney. Shut up. It's crazy. And also... um, where I fell, she really fell flat and I felt really bad for Justin. Wait one second. And another thing where I felt really bad for Justin was was when he was saying, oh, you know, like it actually really helps when we talk to other couples. Um, when, when we talk to other couples and it helps when I hear, you know, uh, Seth is like on my side and everything like that. And she is so, I'm going to use a lot of therapy buzzwords. She is so dismissive and invalidating to him as a man. She totally emasculates him and takes him out of his healthy masculine energy because he was being vulnerable. He was being honest. He was opening up. And what did she say to him? She goes, oh, so you want to be validated? Excuse me, miss? Your husband is opening up to you about what is therapeutic and healthy for him when trying to create a healthy marriage to you, and you completely dismiss and invalidate him by saying, oh, so you need validation? No, you dummy. He needed support. You, Whitney, wanted validation from your therapist. That's why you got pissed when you didn't get it. He was saying it was nice to have Seth on my side. It was nice to have the guy, a guy's perspective who understands where like I'm coming from, right? Because it is different, you know? It is nice to have like for example, say you're in, you know, two couples talking and the other and the woman of the couple is like, "Yeah, Candy, like I totally get what you're saying when that ha- when my husband does that, I feel the same and blah 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 blah." It's nice to have that support system of another person. And what Justin was saying was that it was nice to have Seth's support in that moment because clearly he was not feeling supported by his wife. But to say, oh, you need validation 
is a very slick way of cutting him down. You see? And that's why he's not wearing his wedding ring. That's why you guys aren't having sex. That's why he has one foot out the door. The problem is you, Whitney. The call is coming from inside the house. Okay? Hello. All right. Now, let's see. Da, 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 da. I did like the conversation they had a couple episodes ago about Justin's father passing away and then Justin stepping up for her in the, and then she stepped up for her in the family. Um, Whitney might also be having a Kyle syndrome moment and also a Dorit syndrome moment. I'll break down the two. The Dorit syndrome moment that I think Whitney is having is that Whitney thinks she's had this glow up. She's had the plastic surgery. She's gotten the body. She's gotten the face. She's gotten to be on Bravo. She has a little bit of fame. She's making this, you know, Bravo check. I think Whitney wants to cash Justin in for a younger, hotter, um, wealthier model. The same thing I think Dorit wants to do with PK. She feels like I got the I got the face, I got the body, I got the plastic surgery, I got this little Bravo check, I got my 15 minutes of fame. I want to cash in on these old broke dudes, you know. And so I do think it's that Dorit syndrome where she's ready to find a hotter, younger, you know, man with more coins. And then I also think that Whitney might be having a bit of Kyle syndrome. You know, sort of this like midlife crisis. I don't know how old Whitney is, but well, you know what I'm saying. I feel like a midlife crisis is anywhere from like 35 to 55. I don't know. Anyway, I feel like she's also having sort of like a midlife crisis. You know, she took Lisa not paying attention to her at Mary's party way too far. She's extremely short and dismissive to Justin, very similar to how Kyle treats Mauricio. Very short, very dismissive, very combative. You can see in every single episode, Justin just looks like a deer in headlights and he just wants to run away from her because she's constantly putting him down, you know? Um, and then she's weaponizing, like I said before, the healing journey, you know, and all of that stuff. Very similar to how Kyle is just like, I'm not drinking and I'm exercising and all of this stuff and blah, 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 which I think are good things for her to cope, but it's, but still weaponizing it, right? Um, so I think she's kind of having those crises. And... I've never liked Whitney, and I still don't. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just, I don't. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't. I don't. I just, I don't. Like, girl, stop. Um, but I did think it was interesting that on Watch What Happens Live, she called out Monica's Freudian slip. So this is where the rumor came from that Monica stole Lisa Barlow's 60K ring. So Whitney said that Monica slipped up and said, I helped Lisa find her ring. And, but, but then Andy was like, but it was never found. And Whitney's like, exactly. You know what I mean? Like you would say, I helped Lisa look for her ring. But if you say I helped her find it, that means you found it. So, Monica, if you found the ring, where is it, boo-boo? And to be honest with you, energy and Freudian slips, what people say when they are just on autopilot, what the subconscious slips out, usually is the truth. Why would she say, I helped Lisa find her ring, instead of I helped Lisa look for it? Like, I helped you look for your ring. Like, I, I'm sorry you didn't find it, but, like, I helped you look for it. But if I'm upset and I'm in the moment and I'm not thinking, if I'm not staying in my lie, I'm going to say, but I helped you find your ring and you're still treating me this way. You see what I'm saying? Your subconscious mind will slip in those Freudian slips and tell on you every single time. Every single time. So the fact that Monica said, I helped Lisa find her ring. I, to me, that solidifies even more something shady happened. Because why would you say she helped her find it? Watch watch the um, last night's episode of Watch What Happens Live with Whitney on it. Her and Andy Cohen actually have a, for once, an, an intelligent conversation about it. Because Andy's like, well, wait a minute. Wouldn't you say I helped you look for it? And Whitney's like, yeah, that's what you would say. You wouldn't say I helped you find it. So Miss Monica, and as we already know, Monica is a liar. 
you know, we did a whole video on the receipts that got exposed, you know, she's counter suing beauty lab and everything like that. But then um, she's counter suing beauty lab for $50,000. But then the receipts came out that there were screenshots and DMs and everything of Monica talking about how much she loved her look, she loved her face, that you know, she's getting all these compliments, and she couldn't wait to come back. But yet you're trying to claim that they did a botched job. So to me, if you are a person who will disrespect your mother, who will um, file frivolous lawsuits, who will lie about being divorced, who will lie about why they got divorced, who will lie about who will lie on the father of their children, she was acting like the father of her kids just abandoned her and the kids, and she was a single mom with no money trying to raise the kids, and that turned out to be a lie. He was still in the children's life; he just moved to a different state. But he was also still financially supporting her and his children as he should. So that was also a lie. So if you're willing to lie in legal documents, disrespect your mother publicly and privately, lie on the father of your children who is still financially supporting you, why would you not steal a $60,000 ring? Not to mention you worked for Jen Shaw. So that right there says your, your moral compass is literally nowhere to be found. So a person who is capable of all that, why wouldn't they steal a ring? I think this is what I think happened. Again, this is a hypothetical opinion-based scenario. I think Lisa lost her ring. I think that uh, Whitney, not Whitney, Monica was helping her to look for it. I think she found it exactly like she said. And then I think Lisa was talking about it was $60,000. I can't believe I lost my $60,000 ring, blah, 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 blah. It's real, you guys. And I think Monica was like, oh, you mean this ring is real? You mean these diamonds are real? Wait, you mean this is $60,000? Right down in her pants pocket, popped it in her purse, popped it up her cooch. I don't know. That to me is what I think happened. Because then people said after um, Lisa lost her ring, Monica came into a lot of money. Now, whether or not she was wearing a part of the ring, because as you know, when you have bulk jewelry, because Lisa's ring was stacked, it had about three or four rings to it. You know, like the stacked ring. It was like a stacked diamond ring. And if you know anything about jewelry, you're able to um, dismantle. You can melt jewelry. You can take things out, you know, all of that stuff. So do I think that, you know, the ring that Monica was wearing was a, one of the dismantled diamond rings that um, that Lisa had. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. They look very similar. Who knows? But all signs are pointing to there is a fly in the milk. Fly in the milk. All right. Now let's turn to Heather. Okay. So Heather. I said it before, I'll say it again. I'm loving her and Lisa's budding friendship. I'm here for it. I hope it continues. It's a vibe. It's a vibe. Honestly, this season, Heather has been so much more tolerable. I don't know if it's because she's, you know, holding her ground with Whitney. I don't know if it's because Jen Shaw is no longer on the show. I don't know if it's because her personality is no longer hating Lisa Barlow. Um, I'm liking Heather so much more this season. Like I really am. She's less irritating. But with that being said, the theme of her party was whack. Like if you're leaving the Mormon church, if you are writing literally a book series on bad Mormon leaving the, leaving the Mormon church, then leave the freaking church. We don't need a whole party with Little House on the Mormon Prairie. It's boring to me. I felt the same way when Ebony did the Black History Month dinner in New York City. I'm bored. I don't want history lessons. I don't want a Black history lesson. I don't want a Mormon lesson. I don't want any lesson. Stop. This ain't school, okay? This is not an online class. I don't want it. I don't want it. I want decadence and fun and champagne and feathers and sequins and lace and just fun things or just like a fun girl party. Like, I don't know. Like... I don't want any history lesson on any culture or religion or I don't I don't want it. Stop. Let it go. It was boring. It was whack. Okay. But what was refreshing was to see Heather see through Monica's lies. 
but I do think the timing is very convenient. Like I said before, Heather loves that when she is beefing with someone, particularly Lisa Barlow, to get other people to join in on the beef with this person. So Heather had no problem reeling in Monica, reeling in Monica to fight on her on behalf to go against Lisa. Because don't forget, when um Lisa Barlow had Jack's, what's the name of the party? Like the, I don't know, the assignment party, whatever the hell it was called. She had the brunch. And then Angie told Heather about the brunch that she wasn't um, invited to. Heather then got all in her feelings. Why wasn't I invited to the brunch? Like, is it because I wrote a book? Blah, 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 blah. And then in the next scene, you see Heather talking to Monica being like, oh, well, how does Lisa know about you and your mom? She's been telling people. She told Whitney that you're lying about it, about your mom being abusive. She wound Monica up. Because she was pissed that Lisa didn't invite her to the brunch. And then Monica went and did her bidding. So I think the timing is very, very convenient that Heather is now all of a sudden friends with Lisa. And now all of a sudden she's seeing the truth of who Monica is. I think she always saw the truth of who Monica was. But as long as Monica was useful to her to go against Lisa, she wanted to be friends with her. Because did you notice how when Heather was talking to Monica about their Bermuda trip, she said, oh, you have to apologize to Lisa. Why? Is it because you and Lisa are now friends? Do you see what I'm saying? I highly, highly, highly doubt that Heather would have told Monica that she owes Lisa Barlow an apology if Heather and Lisa had not been friends, had not gotten back on that good foot. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I think is going on with them. But it's refreshing to see her see through it. You know, um, I'm looking forward to seeing the Bermuda breakdown. I'm looking forward to see what happens with all of that. Um, and like I said before, she came with the receipts regarding the lawsuit with Monica and Beauty Lab. Again, Monica got caught lying. They had receipts and screenshots from 2019 of Monica talking about how much she loved her face, how much she loved the results, and how she looked so good. Did not seem like a botched job to me. Definitely not a 50K botched job. So, Monica girl, bye. All right. Let's talk about Miss Meredith. So Meredith and Seth, and Seth are actually super cute to watch this season. Like I'm enjoying them. Like they're a beat. They're a vibe. I'm here for it. You know, they're 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 a fit. They're they're a vibe. I'm here for it. The girlie loves the vibes. Um, and I love the podcast concept. But this is another couple that I think just have an agreement. I think at this point in their lives, not when they first got married. I think when they first got married, it was like you know, mar- like husband wife stuff. But I think at this point in their lives, I think. She does her, he does him, and they are good co-parents to their children. And I think that they like being, quote, married, husband and wife. It's a part of their business. It's a part of their brand. I think um, they also want to play nice with each other because they don't want anybody poking into their marriage and into their business anymore. Um, When it comes to, you know, who's cheating, who's not cheating, who's living together, who's not living together. (laughs) excuse me, you know, why is he always traveling, blah, 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 blah. But I do think they're actually in a good place. Like, I don't think that they're pretending to be in a good place to like show face. I think they're actually in a good place. But that good place is, hey, listen, we've been married for 20 plus years. We've built this life together. We have businesses together. We have these children. It doesn't really matter. Let's just do life together in this way. I think they have another understanding like that. Do you see what I'm saying? Where I think she does her, he does him, and it works for them. And I'm here for it. You know, like I always said, like, if you are an adult, you have 100% a right to govern your life, your lifestyle, and your relationships as long as they are safe and consensual any any way you want to. You know what I'm saying? So I think that... I kind of think they're like how Angie and her husband would have been if those rumors didn't come to light. They're just like, listen, we've been together for all these years. 
we have our family, we have the money, we have the businesses. Let's just, you know, write it on out. That's what I think is going on with them. But it's actually nice to see them because I do think they're in a good place. So I love to see it. Okay. I'm also looking forward to seeing more of Meredith. I feel like we have saw more of her this episode than we have in a lot of the other episodes. Um, hopefully her and Lisa are back being a fun duo. Like I said before, on Lisa's side, I do think that Meredith was 100% correct in her fight with Lisa. Like, Lisa needs to put a pin in it. Like, let the past be the past at this point. You've got to let it go, girl. Like, just let it go. And she was being a hypocrite. You know, you can't sit down and be like, I know all this stuff about Monica, but I'm not going to say it. But then say, oh, but Meredith is this horrible person because she said, I know all this stuff about Angie, but I'm not going to say it. You guys basically said the same exact thing. So, girl, bye. Okay. Her play to event was cute. And she was smart to use, you know, lower um, power. This is lower power. I meant lower, just lower price points, right? Um, because, again, plated jewelry is way more accessible because it's not, you know, um, real gold or, you know, not solid gold, gold and all that. It's just the plated. So it's way more accessible. One, it's way more economical to source and to get. And B, it's just way more accessible for people to buy. So that was a really smart move on her, on her behalf so if she doesn't want to do um, – if she doesn't want to do – what do you call it? do do you know, more expensive stuff. So that's kind of where I land with Meredith. I'm looking forward to seeing more of her, more of her meltdowns. You know, hopefully everything will come out um, with her and Angie. I wonder if she's going to have a Monica moment. I wonder if she's going to have a Lisa moment. But I hope her and Lisa just get back to being friends. Like, it's a dead horse. I'm over it. I'm liking Meredith. She's very chill. She's just very laying it on the line. And I love it when she goes um, lawyer on people and she gathers them. Like the way she went lawyer on Lisa and gathered her about, well, actually, you said the same thing I did. You know, when Meredith gets into lawyer mode, it is a total, total vibe, total moment. Absolutely love it. 100%. Okay. Now let's get to Miss Mary. Now, People only go to Mary when they have a common enemy. So Monica thought that Mary would be on her side about Lisa, but Mary actually, to Mary's credit, I have to say, was actually fair and held her accountable. She's like, well, you give just as much as you get, and you need to not hold grudge and let it go. Like, she actually gave really good advice and held Monica accountable. Now, do I think Monica actually likes Mary? No. But do I think Monica realized she needed an ally? Yes. But Miss Mary, you need to spend your time looking after your very problematic son. Last um, live, we talked about it. You know, her son is going, he's going through some things. He had multiple DUIs. He was posting, you know, drugs and paraphernalia and weapons and everything on his social media accounts. So he might be chasing, might be facing criminal charges. And I think he's like maybe 20, 21, maybe. It is not not a good look and her not even knowing if he was married or not like to me I feel bad even talking about it because to me her son is on a very very dangerous line you know what I mean when you're mixing alcohol and drugs and all this stuff and I mean like the hard stuff he had like pills and cough syrup and all this stuff like that's basically like a headline waiting to happen, you know? So when I talk about her son in this way, I do it with a little bit of trepidation because I just get this feeling like, I don't know, like it's scary. You know, you you hear about people overdosing all the time. And it sounds like it could be one of those situations if it doesn't get under control. Because I feel like if you are so bold in, to be posting this online after you've already been arrested for driving under the influence, you are in a dark, hellish place. And it just takes one pill. It just takes one snort. It takes one shoot up for things to, to go to a place that you cannot come back from. So I think Mary needs to really put all of her energy in getting her son into rehab and figuring out what the hell is going on with him. Because to me, there's just something very dark and scary going on there. And it just takes one 
one too many, one too much, and it's a headline none of us wants to read. You see what I'm saying? So, no, I don't think Mary is going on the trip. I don't know. I don't know. Ugh. All right, you guys. So those are my takes on The Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. But I, of course, want to know what you guys think. So I'm going to drop the link in case anybody wants to come up and chat. And then I also take some of your candy cane questions and comments.